Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David Jansen, Jr. Uh, I serve currently as scholarly assistant professor, uh, 2D foundations and undergraduate coordinator in the Department of Fine Arts at Washington State University. And uh, today what I'm going to share with you is my experience of a 3D, 3D project that I developed um, a few years ago that was sort of centered around my students' own struggles and inspired by that, as well as my um, childhood growing up in a low-income uh, family. And so this project that I created is called The Masks We Wear, and I thank you all so much uh, for letting me share this with you today. So um, just to kind of set the scene uh, a little bit here for all of you is that um, fall 2019, uh, my students were really struggling in studio specifically uh, with just overall motivation and things uh, as that tends to happen about midway through the semester, as we all know. Um, but also to my students, um, the folks that I'm fortunate enough to work with, um, they are typically coming from uh, non-art and design related majors a lot of the times. So this class had about 20 students and um, at this point in the semester, they were really struggling with construction methods, form, volume, uh, using materials appropriately, and just overall kind of engagement. So um, we are about ready to head into our third project of the semester, and I didn't really have anything planned at this point. Um, I had other previous projects that I had done in the past, but I wanted to do something different um, because of how um, the overall morale was in my class. Um, so what I decided to do um, just to kind of get myself uh, inspired really to take a break from everything that was going on at the time. I went home that weekend and went through some old family photos. And uh, this is a photo of my sisters and I around Halloween 1995 uh, here. And it got me thinking and sparked this idea. Um, and I started reflecting about how I grew up. Um, and here you can see on the left hand side, I've got my sisters. They're wearing some hand me down costumes from uh, our next door neighbors. Uh, that my mom had asked uh, for and my dad and I'm wearing uh, what I wanted to be that year was the Megazord from the popular television show Power Rangers uh, at the time. And I remember telling my parents that I wanted to be the Megazord and I remember them like so many other times when I was growing up I had these really big dreams and these ideas and oftentimes because of our financial um, sort of place in the world at, at that moment we couldn't really afford to go out and buy a lot of the things that I really wanted um, but they never really ever told me no they just would sort of say okay if that's what you want to do how are we going to make that thing happen when maybe we can do that with stuff that we have here in the house already um, so what my dad, I remember this moment, he had brought home a bunch of cardboard and him and my mom draw and drew this out um, on cardboard. And this basically was a flat plane uh, that sat in front of me. And then over the few weeks before Halloween, they would take a little time every night together and kind of paint certain uh, areas of this costume, which really ended up just being this large plane of cardboard uh, that they painted that I held in front of me like a shield for trick-or-treating times. And so during this moment of kind of reflecting about this, I thought to myself about my students a little bit. And um, I started thinking about what I really wanted to have happen in the classroom. And I thought to myself, like, is it possible, like maybe we're just not having enough fun in this class? And can that be really serious, like aimed and focused fun? And could we do that and maybe also trick, could I trick them into learning? Um, which is one of my favorite things to do with my students. I like to kind of trick folks into learning these things so that it doesn't feel so arduous uh, in the process or so um, you know, intimidating. And is it possible, could we keep the cost of this project really, really low, potentially, so it doesn't cost anyone any money? They already pay student fees and things, and we have a lot of materials and stuff in our studio, thankfully. And so could we keep that cost really down? And through this project, could we maybe further build some community with each other and maybe just share about our lives a little bit more because I felt like the community aspect that I try to build in my classes just really wasn't uh, happening this, this specific semester. Um, so as I often do, um, getting into project development and stuff when I'm thinking about how do I visualize or relay this information to my students, sometimes, uh, especially, especially in my 3D courses, I like to create these like little tiny mini zines or these little brochures that kind of visualize these different principles and elements of what we're trying to cover in class. Um, so with this project, I was going to ask them to create some orthographic drawings and we're, we're really going to do a lot of process uh, into this project. And this was something that I 
did to help aid their understanding uh, a little bit. And we talked a lot about in class about how to kind of visualize these things on paper before we try to build these things and craft these things the way that we want. So um, this was just a couple of quick kind of zines that sort of go over the process that I sort of created and folded and gave everybody. And I realized too that with my 20 students, oftentimes it's really hard for me personally to address the same kind of questions over and over in class. And a lot of times I find that creating these little guides um, or step-by-step -step kind of procedural, interesting looking directions, this can really engage them. And, and often we end up getting to a lot deeper conversations because they're not, um, you know, they can reflect on some of the process a little bit more directly instead of having to go over it and over it, over and over again, verbally. Um, so these were some things that I had made and passed out to the students as well as I also developed a uh, presentation that kind of went through um, you know, different masks and helmets and things throughout history. Um, and I also needed to kind of consider what these construction requirements were going to be uh, for this project. So I thought thinking about what my mom and dad had done for me when I was uh, just a kid, thinking about what we had lying around and how could we make something that was really like pretty outstanding and, and could um, with just stuff that we had in the studio. So all of my students for a few weeks before this project, I just kind of had kept dropping subtle hints about, um, you know, let's bring some cardboard because we're going to have a cardboard project at some point in the semester. I'm not sure when that's going to be. And then during that weekend, I'm looking at that family photo. I decided, you know what, we're going to use the cardboard for this project that is going to be basically brand new as I introduce this for the first time. Um, and these were some other just requirements. I wanted them to use applied color and potential inherent color of other materials or surfaces. It had to be worn on their head or their upper body. And um, one thing that my students were really struggling with at this point in the semester was thinking about their three-dimensional works in the round from all different sides um, and their size requirements here. I was hoping they would at least go a little bit larger, um, thinking about at least, you know, sort of two foot in any one direction. but. What was difficult right about this time too is that I realized, you know, with our other projects that we had slated, I only had about three weeks from start to finish with them in this project. And what I found is three weeks for us because we were meeting twice a week, you know, that was only six days of in class time plus whatever they decided to do um, outside of class. So this kind of began a challenge and I started looking um, and started gathering that same weekend, um, you know, artists that we could talk about as reference to kind of put some basis into some contemporary art uh, making and to kind of introduce my students to the wide variety of materials that they're really going to be allowed to use and to think about their materials in a different way. And these were some artists that we had discussed in class um, and talked about some of their methods of making and some of the concepts and stuff behind their work. Um, and I also, like I just mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, I also put together a presentation that really went through what I like to call the sort of like time machine moment, where we talked about some of the earliest found masks and helmets and things throughout history, and the variation of what these things serve and, and what they really are, um, and, and the importance of these throughout different cultural, um, you know, societies, different ceremonies. Um, and that's something that we had chatted about. And I got to introduce my students to some things that they recognized and some other things that they felt like were really challenging. Um, but I also try my best to find some grounding in uh, art history and in a lot of my three-dimensional projects too. So um, I also too, as inspirational moments for them too, also wanted to tie into some stuff that maybe they'd be a little more well-known or familiar, uh, you know, they'd be a little more aware of uh, potentially. So. Um, I even threw in some of my favorite uh, hockey goalies uh, masks to talk about surface and, and what these marks and things mean. Um, we talked about artists uh, and musicians that use helmets or masks to kind of add to their stage presence or to the overall show or the entertainment value for their um, shows. But we also got to talk about some really obscure um, kind of strange things too about like the Mickey Mouse gas masks and things in the, in the 40s. Um, but all of them were got really, really excited about, you know, the possibilities of what they were about to make. But I also knew that by showing these things, 
that some of them would try to lean into just recreating things they had already created before or had already seen out in the world. So with this project, um, like some of my other projects too, I always have a list of things that we're not trying to do or not trying to make. And really this was helping to challenge them to think outside of what they're used to seeing to create something really truly um, unique. So we weren't looking for any specific like characters for many comic books or graphic novels as popular serial killer documentaries and things are, we weren't looking for representation of, of those folks um, or those individuals. Video game characters and things too. I know a lot of my students are into gaming and things and they often will reference certain shapes or colors from these things, but really wanted to push them outside of any of the anime or that they might be engaged with or the Disney stories that are so uh, important to them. Um, and also kind of thinking about other things that I had seen done maybe in some other classes with some other colleagues that I was also talking with about this project during that time. So um, these were kind of my big no-nos here. And then um, really after doing all of this prep work, this was kind of the statement that was left in my mind about, you know, I really wanted my students to imagine what would happen if they could somehow both be influenced or inspired by their own life experience, the research that we're, they were doing, the things, the artists that I was showing them, um, the different masks and helmets throughout history and all over the globe. I wanted them to kind of sit there and, and really marinate with all those ideas and think about some way that they potentially could reveal something about their identity by also obscuring their face or hiding, you know, what they, their physicality with a wearable uh, form. So what I want to show you now is some uh, examples of some student works and kind of talk about these individuals because I had such a uh, an honor of sort of working with all these folks and it really was a game changer moment for the rest of my semester with these with these students. So this was a work that Liz had done. Um, Liz created this uh, exaggerated self portrait of themselves and sort of inspired by um, some animation and things and Bob's Burgers and some of these stories and things that they really enjoyed. Um, and Liz was a student in my class who was very, very much kind of self-conscious about some of the creative decisions they were making. And what I found through this project is that uh, other students around Liz, um, they all were really like hyping each other up and being very supportive. And Liz found a space in this moment of this project to really grab a hold of their creative energy and their spirit and really allow themselves to think through the building processes behind this project like they never got a chance to do yet in this in this course. And it was really a, a, a really great moment for Liz and just the unique use of material and they did a really great job um, finding uh, materials with our communal stack of cardboard and other materials that we were all using from. So. Um, Swan had created this this piece that actually um, was very much inspired by her um, like familial heritage um, growing up in China, but also her travels internationally with her family and she wanted to create this work that kind of blended, um, you know, different influences and um, Swan all, you know, five or all like four foot 11 of her could fit inside of <laughs> this mask and she actually did create a kinetic uh, opportunity in this project too. So these ear flaps actually moved when she put her hands uh, with these cords and things and made this move as well. So that started getting me to think about future performative aspects of, you know, what, what this project maybe could become in the future. But um, Swan did a really great job here too. And really for the first time had thought all the way through from start to finish what this work was going to look like in its infancy all the way to the final work. And we talked about in critique too, there was a lot of other opportunities for to create some better volumes and things with the teeth um, and some other uh, surface moments as well. But um, I was really proud of Swan uh, during this time. And Matt had created this future self portrait of themselves. Um, and Matt was going through some really, I won't get into it here, uh, but Matt was going through some re really difficult um, just life situation at that time and this project it was interesting it really gave Matt a, a moment to kind of reflect and think outside of himself a little bit about the future um, and he had a really good time making this we talked about the overall craftsmanship of this work and how it could have been improved it sat kind of awkwardly on his shoulders but um, he really wanted to imagine what he would look like in maybe 60 years from that day and that time um, and, you know, considering that uh, for himself. So that was kind of an interesting moment uh, here too. And uh, Emily had created this work, which I thought was uh, incredibly powerful and the her fellow colleagues really responded very strongly to this work too. 
um, Emily wanted to kind of focus in on her own anxieties and fears and her excitability and her, um, she sort of would this kind of self-described um, sort of airhead. She would always bring that up in class. And she often would lose her attention very easily with a lot of the projects. And this was a work and this project kept her engaged so much in such a different way than all the other things we had did earlier this semester. And um, Emily did a lot of research too into other color choices and surface techniques and things and really utilize that cardboard. Um, and this was a very well balanced work as well, which I was just thrilled for her uh, during this time. And uh, David ended up making a work very much inspired by him growing up in Mexico and his travels and things with his family as well. And this nickname that his mother had given him of uh, Pinata, uh, that was his nickname. Um, and I, as there's a story behind that, which I, I didn't bother to ask, but um, he definitely leaned into that idea of the construction method of some of those um, some of those things from his childhood and these celebration moments and thought about his own personality and how the world kind of sees him or his family see him. And that was his um, his response that sort of fit right over his head and shoulders here. And we talked about maybe thinking about putting some armholes or different things in here to get the arms engaged somehow. But with the amount of time that we had, I was just really, really excited for David um, and what he was able to do with the found paper, tissue paper and things that he was collecting and painting uh, and just really did a great job here too. And even even asked uh, from some of his other colleagues how to, how to use fiber materials and kind of um, weave and uh, create these other, um, the sort of uh, ponytail kind of area on the backside or what would serve as the tail for this pinata. Um, so things that I think about now, um, just in reflection of this moment, that I had with these students was like, there were so many other things that I, I could potentially adapt in the future based off of the success that I had with this project with uh, you know the large majority of my students. Um, we did get into sketching a lot of orthographic drawings. They did photographs of themselves. We drew over top of our images. We did a lot of stuff in class before we even touched any cardboard. But I think in the future, I would even maybe put more uh, of an emphasis on that process uh, to, also, because of what I saw happen uh, in this project, my students were really starting to collaborate with each other's and like leaning on each other for help and critique while the process, while the work was being made. Um, everybody kind of was, was looking over at what everybody else was creating and they were helping each other hold cardboard together and cutting things. And some folks didn't have that strong of hands and other people were really chipping in and they were just doing that naturally. And I thought, wow, like, maybe in the future this pro type of project maybe could be a team effort and maybe it could be much larger. Uh, or maybe because of Swan's uh, kinetic approach with those ears, I thought maybe I make it a requirement in the future that they have to make some part of this work movable. It has to actually be kinetic somehow. Um, and you know, this even got me to think after this project, you know, what if I designed an entire course that was around maybe performance or wearable uh, objects in a introductory 3D course like this was. Could I do that? And what would that look like? Um, and as I did it, so many different demonstrations on building materials and gave them all this supplemental and supportive information, I always, I guess maybe this is just a shortcoming of mine, but I always feel like I don't get a chance to do enough uh, demonstrations on craft and technique and surface and things. But maybe that's also too because of my tight time constraint with this project. And I might expand on that in the, in the future. But um, the overall impact that this project had on my students was like, unlike anything else I had experienced uh, teaching a 3D foundations course uh, ever, it was the rest of the semester with them, they were more confident in the wood shop once we got into the wood shop. Um, their confidence with materials just had like skyrocketed. They were a lot more thoughtful in their planning of how they were going to build things. And they also really felt more together as a class and they were really holding each other accountable for those days where maybe some folks would show up a little late or maybe folks wouldn't show up. They were really relying on each other and making sure they were keeping in contact with each other even after the semester was over. Um, they, during this time, I saw friendships being built uh, in, this, in this project too. It was so fascinating to watch. Um, and the impact that this had on me was just 
absolutely like insurmountable. I still think about the semester and this group of students every time I have a 3D course that I get to teach. Um, it's just absolutely phenomenal. But the lasting impact there and just for me was thinking about, you know, how could I inspire these students and get them to have some fun and also think about my own experience and how that could maybe lend into the way that we make these uh, works and the materials that we have or the lack of money I often hear my students you know complain about and things too how can I kind of use my understanding of how I saw and seeked out problems and how I saw my family and how they treated uh, my sisters and I when we were kids when we had these really big grand ideas but we didn't have a lot of money to get those things done in the same kind of way but we adapted and, and that was the biggest thing too that that I really gathered from this project. Um, but you can find this project, and this is just a quick plug here for the what we do now dot art um, website here that some fellow educators and incredible artists have put together. But you can find this project in its entirety with all of the supportive materials that I put together, um, as well as even some more behind the scenes stuff on this website. So I, I definitely encourage all of you to take a look. And there's lots of other projects and things up there by some just absolutely incredible um, minds as well. So definitely take a look at that. And I just want to quickly say thank you all so much uh, for listening to me these last few minutes. And um, please let me know if you have any questions about this project. And my contact information is on that website uh, as well. But I thank you all so much for including me in this 3D project share moment. And I hope all of you have a wonderful afternoon.